right, so season, it's a tale as old as time. Season ends in heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Teams assess the issues. The Ravens, the question Akbar becomes, are they now better equipped this season to get past the Chiefs in the AFC or anybody? That yeah, I, I think they have a great chance, to be quite honest with you. I mean, of course, if they go out and run the ball more than six times, you go yeah. back to that AFC championship game, how do you run the ball six times? Mm. Now you get Derrick Henry. Now you're committed to the run. You have to be committed to the run. Can you imagine if you run the ball six times and you have Derrick Henry on the roster? You would be committing football malpractice. That would be malpractice. They could revoke your football license for something like that. It, that shouldn't be cool. But yes, they're ready. I, I think, you know, bringing in Derrick Henry was an excellent move. Um, and then you look at, too, they, they've got guys who are growing up. Your favorite, of course, Jamie, Zay Flowers. Mm. He's no longer a rookie. You know what I mean? Like, he's older. He's a vet. Well, not a vet yet, he's but I mean, guy. He, yeah, he, he's, guy. he's got a year underneath his belt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I look at what they have with their tight ends. Like, mm. they've got Isaiah Likely, who got, who really showed up when Mark yeah. Andrews went out, and he really showed some yeah. flair. Now, all of a sudden, you give them the opportunity to do some cool things with 12 personnel. You can all of a sudden confuse the defense to where... Are they coming out and run? Are they coming mm -hmm. out and pass? You got two stud tight ends. You can do a lot. That's something that they didn't have a lot last year. They didn't run a lot of 12 personnel. So this time around, they could do a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I do you got here? I can't stress how heartbreaking that loss was for Ravens fans last year. I was in the building. Uh, I think I've told this story on the air before, but if you're just tuning in now and Akbar, you're near the show, yeah. my son is a diehard Ravens fan. My wife's family's all Baltimore. So we went to the game as fans. Sure. I didn't have a, a, a dog in the fight. I actually picked the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl, so I was kind of conflicted on this one. Ravens or, or Chiefs, I don't care. My son's in the Lamar jersey. Like, yeah. And it was like just the balloon. Like, they brought out everybody. They had Ray Lewis. They had Ed Reed. Yeah, they had yeah, Terrell yeah. Suggs. Mm -hmm. They had Michael Phelps. It was like, this is it. Baltimore's going back to the Super Bowl. Did they Bowl. play Nelly Hot in here? They did that? Hot in here. They did everything. <laughs> the cast of The Wire. They yeah. had the cast of oh, yes. <laughs> Omar was coming. Everything. <laughs> And then the team just, like, completely, like, lost its identity, to your point. Didn't yeah. run the ball. And I look at some of the losses. Look, we, we add Derrick Henry and we do flips about it. Very quietly, their offensive line went over a huge change over the offseason. They might say this is a good thing. I don't see it that way. These are three veteran offensive linemen who played a lot of games for them and were very important for them who are all elsewhere. Morgan Moses and Simpson both went to the Jets. Zeitler no longer with the Ravens either. They have three new starting offensive linemen. Patrick McCurry is going to be the right tackle unless Roger Rosengarten, who they took in the second round, is going to start over him. We don't okay. know. Uh, Daniel Falele and then Andrew Voorhees. That's a fourth rounder, a seventh rounder. These guys have combined for 37 career starts, filling mm. in for all those career starts there. So you think of Ravens, you think, wow, Lamar and Derrick Henry, and, and we're going to pound the ball, and we've got all this great offensive running power. But if you've got three new offensive linemen, it might not be exactly like it was a year ago. You can add in the fact they've got a new defensive coordinator in Zach Orr coming in for Mike McDonald. There are changes to this team, and I don't want us all to just look at, look, they added Derrick Henry. They're better. Yeah. They had some important people leave the building, too. They did. Yeah. My answer to this is just one of my least favorite words in the English language. It's a sure, sure. Maybe they are better, maybe they're not. I say that because we've seen some great Lamar teams, even just in the recent history. They've had some loaded teams, including last year's. I, I think, really, this just comes down to he has to play a fantastic game against Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Like, he, he has to be the two-time MVP in the biggest game. If you want to pull up the stats from that game, it's fine. He was fine. He threw a touchdown. He threw a pick. He ran a little bit. They scored 10 points. He wasn't his best Lamar. And that's what it's going to take to beat Mahomes. And we're at this point with Lamar now. There are 11 players in NFL history who have won multiple MVPs. Multiple MVPs. One of them does not have a Super Bowl championship. It's Lamar Jackson. It's the only one. Hmm. Guys win multiple MVPs, and we're talking about everybody from Jim Brown to Joe Montana to Aaron Rodgers. Guys have won a Super Bowl. Lamar has not been to a Super Bowl. You see this a lot, too. Two and four in the playoffs. Two and four in the playoffs. It's rough, but it's not like it's done. It's not going to happen. You know who started two and four in the playoffs? Peyton Manning. Hmm. Peyton Manning started two and four in the playoffs. He couldn't get through the AFC. They were tough Broncos teams, tough Titans teams. The this Patriots is even before. Teams. Yeah, Patriots teams, of course. And that's just where Lamar is. And then eventually, you know, Manning had his Mahomes, and his Mahomes was Brady, and he eventually broke through. Peyton Manning finally won at 30, 30 years old. If you were to ask me, Lamar, how old he is, I guess, I don't know, 29. It's only 27. Mm. It's like he's younger than you think. I feel like we've been watching him for a long time. 
But that guy in the, in the red helmet that we see up there is, is not going anywhere ever. Eventually, you have to beat him. And Lamar has had teams that are good enough to beat the Chiefs. They have had teams that are good enough to get to the Super Bowl, and they don't. I don't think he's played his best game in the biggest games yet. And you run in the danger of the Ravens becoming the AFC Cowboys, where it's like, great record, MVP-type stuff, a lot of jerseys, but it's just kind of sparkle and fade. Two and four is two and four. That's not two and two. That's not new. That's not he's young. It's, he's in the prime of his career. Last year's team was great. Then there's also that big trust team a few years ago who got destroyed by the Titans. They don't do a lot once they get there. And I just, I don't think this is about team construct. I don't think this is about offensive lineman starts or running back additions. I think it is your best player is supposedly the best player in the league. He needs to be amazing in the playoffs. And he hasn't been. I know it's a team sport and wins are not a quarterback stat. At this point, you're two and four. It's time to start playing your best in the biggest games, and it's it's time to be an adult about it. It's kind of what makes the MVP an infuriating award because it's so regular season based. Because you want the guy who's playing well into January to be the MVP. It's just awkward when Lamar shows up in February. It is you're awkward. Like, oh, Lamar, right? we haven't seen you in like yeah. five weeks. This is so strange. It's interesting you bring up the Cowboys because similar to the Cowboys this off season, they uh, Dan Quinn moves on as a defensive coordinator to Washington. They bring in Mike Zimmer, one of the most veteran defensive coaches in the NFL. The Ravens have their defensive coordinator move on to Mike McDonald. He goes to Seattle. They pretty much went in the opposite end of the spectrum of veteran defensive coaches. 32-year-old Zach Orr is the new defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. You might not know his name. You may remember him playing for the Ravens, and he retires quickly because of a medical issue he had in his neck and his back as a player. He gets into the linebacking coach core. He's with the Ravens. He goes to Jacksonville, comes back. And when Mike McDonald leaves this defense to go head coach Seattle, he says, Zach Orr, come with me. I, I want you to be on my staff. Zach Orr says no. Harbaugh taps him to become the 32-year-old defensive coordinator for the Ravens. This is the guy who now has Roquan Smith in coming out of the backfield, who's now going to work with Kyle Hamilton to shore up that secondary. This is not just, I think the tee-up is kind of unfair. This is not just a Chiefs issue for the Ravens. This is a defense that has to deal with Joe Burrow in yeah. your division, sure. the potential of a Deshaun Watson in your division, a Josh Allen who is constantly looming, a, 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 another Harbaugh who's going to get his quarterback right in the AFC. This is not just a Chiefs issue for the Ravens. Defensively, does Zach or the solution and the guy who's going to continue carry this torch of classically a team that always has amazing defenses 32 mm -hmm. years old Peter and, and and he's got an amazing story like you said the health issues had to retire early and then he goes into coaching and he's already at this role the good side of it is if they win it's like okay he's the future head coach like look what we yeah. did I also look at the players two years ago Wink Martindale was their defensive coordinator last year it was Mike McDonald now it's like look at your third different defense mm -hmm. in three different years and we'll have coach Rivera on in a bit and like I'd like to know like does does he just take the exact defense that McDonald brought and say, hey, we're running it again? Or is he going to add his own wrinkles? So, mm -hmm. Jamie, I think it's such a good point. It's a cool story. It's a great young uh, coaching story. But last year we saw, you know, the Eagles, they lost. Um, you know, Gannon went for the Arizona job. And Shane Steichen went to the Indianapolis job. And it's like, all right, Brian Johnson and Sean Desai, those are our new coordinators. Yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as, like, you don't. So let's see if Zach Orr can get it done. I'm curious. The writers in Baltimore would say that because he comes from, like, the linebacker pathway that, like, he's going to just, like, blitz off the charts. So who knows if we see that in mm -hmm. the quarterbacks. You have a thought? No. No, I'd say I would like to see the Ravens get over the hump. It'd be interesting. I, know. I root for these teams that never seem to do it. Ravens, Cowboys, Super Bowl would be pretty cool. I'll tell you, Ooh. here's a symmetry. <laughs> oh, right? is, that, is that a preview? No. I mean, so. I'll give you this Maybe one. so. And I, I spoke to a Ravens fan this week, not family-related. Someone else said, 2000, we won the Super Bowl. 2012, we won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. It's a 12-year difference. 12 years from 2012 is 2012. Is that how they do it? It's in the oh, oh, are you doing that? Every 12 oh, wow. years, the Ravens. And they'll win again in 36. Wow. With Lamar Jackson Jr. That's it. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It'll be Arch Manning. That's it. Arch Manning. That's it. Arch Manning. That's it. <laughs>